Hi, I will show you now what happens if you convolve two binomial distributions. So let x be a binomial of parameters n and p. Let y be a binomial of parameters m and p. Notice that the p parameters are the same. I'm only going to show this when the p parameters are the same and they are different. Things are much more complicated. And of course, these guys are independent. Okay, so the, uh, the first parameter, the number of trials can be different, but the success probability must be the same. And I want to find out about the sum of these two. What is the distribution of the sum of these two random variables? Now, first, the probabilistic way, if you just imagine what x is, x is the number of successes in n trials, n independent trials of success probability p, y is the number of successes of m independent trials, of success probability p. So if you now imagine a sequence of n plus m independent trials in total, and you divide that into the first n and the last m, you count the number of successes in the first part, you count the number of successes in the second part, then you actually realized x and y being binomials of the appropriate parameters, and clearly they are independent because it's two different sets of trials. And if you now add x plus y together, then it's the total number of trials in the total of n plus m, uh, sorry, total number of successes in the total of n plus m trials. And therefore, it seems clear from this picture in a probabilistic way or a counting way that x plus y must be binomial of parameters n plus m because that's the combined number of trials, and p. So the sum of two independent binomials of the same p parameter is again binomial with parameters m plus m and p. However, let's do this using the convolution formula. So let's actually show that this holds by writing up the formulas. So the mass function of x plus y at k is going to be the infinite sum for i, the mass function of x at k minus i, and the mass function of y at i. And again, this comes from the previous video. You break up things according to the value of y, y equals to i. If y is i, then x has to be k minus i so that the sum is k. Okay, so let's write this out. <coughs> so let me start with the first one. So we have k minus i, uh, well, okay, sorry, the mass function of x is a binomial of parameter n and p. At k minus i means that I have to do the binomial coefficient n choose k minus i. I have to do p, which is the success probability to the number of successes. I have to do q, which is one minus p, to the number of failures, which is n minus k minus i, like this. And then I have to multiply this by uh, the mass function of y at i. So that's going to be m choose i, and then p to the i, and q to the m minus i. Okay, so let's see if I can do this summation here and get what we expect the binomial mass function at k of parameter m plus m for x plus y. Okay, now before I do that, let's just look at this i here, and I am still going to write i equals to negative infinity to positive infinity for the boundaries, noting that, in fact, whenever i exceeds k, so that this binomial is zero, or k minus i exceeds n, or i goes negative, or i goes above m, then the binomials kill actually the sum, the, the, the terms under the sum, and those are exactly the cases which are not allowed for the binomial. So the binomial coefficient takes care of the conditions I need. 
it makes sure that I don't want to take x to negative, I don't want to take x to larger than m, I don't want to take i to negative or i to something larger than m. Whenever I try to do that, the binomial coefficients immediately kill it. So I can keep my infinite summation, which is actually a finite sum, but all but finite terms are going to be zero. Okay, so that's the first observation. The second observation I want to make is that the i's power here and the i's power there cancel. There is a positive i here and a negative i there on the q. There is a positive i and a negative i on the p. Those cancel, which is good news. And the total power of p is k. The total power of q is m plus m minus k. And then I'm left with an infinite sum that's really a finite sum. But uh, rather than writing out the complicated boundary, I'm just going to keep it as, as an infinite sum of m choose k minus i and m choose i. And what do I want out of this? What I want, what I want out of this is that x plus y is binomial, so this should really be p to the k, because I'm looking at this mass function at k, q to the n plus m minus k, and I have those, times the binomial coefficient n plus m choose k. So what I really want to see, what I want to see is that this thing is equal to n plus m choose k. Because if I can do that, then on the right hand side I do have the mass function of binomial n plus m and p at k, at the value taken at k. So that's what I really want to do. Now, let's look at this carefully. And let's now go back to a tail we had before. Let's assume that we have n plus m deer in the forest. Okay. And let's assume that m of them are tagged. And therefore n non-tagged okay and let's assume that we capture we capture k of them and uh, we want to find out what is the probability that i of these captured are tagged This is a story we had with the hypergeometric random variable. And the answer was the following, that we want to capture k out of m plus m dear. This can be done in m plus m choose k many ways. Of those k's uh, we captured, uh, we want i to be tagged. So we want i of those k's to come from the m deer, which are tagged. And we want the remaining k minus i to come from those deer which are not tagged. So that's n choose k minus i. This is the probability that uh, exactly i of the k captured deer are tagged, right? So <clears throat> the, we pick i out of the tagged m ones, we pick the remaining k minus i out of the m non-tagged ones, and in total we pick k out of n plus m. If we now do a sum for all possible i values, then we are summing up a negative binomial random variable. So then this sum has to be 1. And now if you look at carefully what we concluded here, that's exactly what we wanted there. Okay? So... If we sum up this fraction here, the denominator doesn't have i in it, so we're really just summing up the numerator. The numerator is exactly the sum we had before, and therefore it has to equal, if this thing is 1, the sum of the numerator has to equal to, to this thing in the, on the bottom. So that exactly is equivalent to showing that this sum here is what we want, m plus m choose k. So now there are two ways you can read this story. The first way is that 
knowing the hypergeometric random variable, knowing that it sums up, its mass function sums up to 1, we gave an analytic proof of the convolution formula for binomials. Or the other way of reading this story is that we first gave a probabilistic proof of the convolution of binomials here. We wrote up, we wrote out the analytic formula for this convolution. And then from that analytic formula of the convolution, we just proved because this must be a max function and this must be the mass function of binomial actually, we just proved that the hypergeometric mass function sums up to one. So there are two ways to read this story. Either you can say that hypergeometric summing up to one gave us a, an analytic proof of the binomial convolution, or one could say that the binomial convolution, looking at both the probabilistic and the analytic proof, gives rise to a proof of the sum formula for the hypergeometric distribution. There are two different sides of the same story.